Going out? Yes. I thought so. I thought we'll be going out tonight. Well, of course I'm going out. It's Friday, I I go to the town and county on Friday. You don't have to be psychic to know that. But it isn't just any Friday, is it? Isn't it? No. What is it, then? Your wedding anniversary. I can have a wedding anniversary. I'm not married. That doesn't matter. <laughs> You're still married on that day. Yes, that's true. What do you suggest we do? Go out and celebrate? <laughs> well, we can't just forget it. You're still married in the eyes of God. Well, don't bring God into it. I was released from my vows by the decree absolute. If I celebrate anything tonight, it'll be my divorce. You can't celebrate a divorce. Why not? You don't celebrate the outbreak of war, you celebrate the armistice. <laughs> you don't mean that. I can see that look in your eyes. What look? That's why you're having a drink with the boys tonight. Boys? Three of them are pensioners. <laughs> Even so, I bet you have a few extra tonight. Why? To deaden the pain. There isn't any pain. And if I have an extra drink tonight, it'll be to celebrate my freedom. You hate to be reminded of it, don't you? No, I am supremely indifferent. Then why did you take a picture down? I know there used to be one. I had a use for the frame. What use? For the bowls team. You replaced my mother with a bowls team? The bowls team haven't been unfaithful to me. Besides, why should I keep her picture? You kept this. What's that? An old cutting from the newspaper. Local footballer weds. Where did you find that? In the bottom cupboard. It was with the letters. When are you going to stop searching this house without a warrant? Why did you keep them? Because I haven't got round to throwing them out. The bride wore a silk Georgette dress with lace sleeves and bodice and a headdress of Lily of the Valley. All right, that's enough. She looks lovely, Dad. Yeah. And she was slimmer in those days. <laughs> I've seen that dress before. When? I came home early one day. She was alone in her bedroom. I could hear her sobbing. I went in and found her in front of the mirror. In that dress. Are you sure? I'm certain. Well, you'd easily recognise it. She burnt a couple of holes in the veil with a cigarette. <laughs> She wasn't wearing a veil. That's how I could see the tears in her eyes. I'm not surprised if you're trying to squeeze into that dress. <laughs> She's not happy, Dad. Well, that's not my concern. I'm not interested. But you never married again. No. Why not? Because once you've touched one bare wire, you never touch another. No. <laughs> if you don't mind, I'm going to put these back in the cupboard. And tomorrow, I'm going to have a bonfire. And if you don't stop interfering, you'll be on top of it. But, Dad... Oh, and by the way, you didn't see her in that dress. It was hired. <laughs> I can't stay long. Oh, just a few minutes. Well, it's such a long drive back. Why couldn't you have made it earlier? Because he was still here. Oh. But he has gone? Yeah. For the weekend? What? You said he'd gone for the weekend. Yeah, a uh, bowls tournament. In the winter? It's indoors. <laughs> so he plays bowls now? Yeah. Hmm. Should suit him. They say it's an old man's game. <laughs> He's not old. He's always been old. <laughs> Does he wear a blazer and flannels? Yeah. Ah, he must look a ducky. No, he looks distinguished. You mean old? Of course, that's only one of his many interests. He has a very varied lifestyle. Numerous facets. Skiing in Switzerland last year. What? Come through. Well? I see the condemned cell hasn't changed much. <laughs> Doesn't it bring back memories? Yeah. You see that mark on the mantelpiece? That's where he lunged at me with the poker. <laughs> and you see that crack in the ceiling? That's where I missed him with an ashtray. Come on, Mum, there must have been some good times. Of course there were good times. It's just that I can't think of any at the moment. <laughs> all looks very neat. I was never tidy enough for him. He was always straightening things. Does he have a cleaning lady? Well, more of a housekeeper, really. Very attractive. She caters for most of his needs. <laughs> Don't tell him. Not that he encourages her. You know what he's like with women. No? What is he like? Indifferent. Are there many women? Well, he has a few freewheeling relationships. Society women, mainly. You mean when he's not playing bowls? Yeah. Of course, he could always attract women. Your father could always engender love, but never return it. He made you feel it was a privilege. He did marry your mum. Yeah, but we had to wait until leap year so that I could propose. <laughs> right, I'd better get started. Now, I want you to remember, Matthew, this has got nothing to do with you. I have merely come back for what is rightfully mine. Right. Pickwick Papers, that's mine. Bought it in a sale. Dresden Shepherdess, that's mine. 
Oh, my little clock. That's mine. I wouldn't take that, Mum. It's always slow. Yeah, that's because he buried it in the garden and swore that it had disappeared. <laughs> right, now then. Where... Why are you looking at me like that? Well, you wouldn't do this. You're like a debt collector. I'm only taking what's mine. Right, now where's that Victorian miniature of the sheep dip? Oh. What's that doing there? It's you. I can see it's me. What's it doing there? He likes to look at it. He can't. After all that's happened. Oh, yeah. He often sits in that chair drinking. He drinks a little too much these days to dull the pain. And he looks at that picture. You mean when he's not out with the society women? Yeah. And sometimes he reads their letters. Letters? These are my letters. You mean he's kept them? Yeah. Have you read them? Yeah, and I think they're beautiful. Well, I was younger then. Young and impressionable. My God, I'm going red. And when he's reading them, <laughs> he likes to play this. Oh, switch that off. I know what you're trying to do, Matthew, but it won't work. I've changed. We can't put the clock back. And what about Pickwick Papers? He's very fond of that. <laughs> Matthew, don't interfere. There's a love. It was a finish between your father and I years ago. Now, where's that miniature? In his bedroom. Right. Oh, switch that off. car is that? What? In the drive. Uh, someone collecting. They could have left it in the road. Collecting what? Oh, all sorts of things. Well, I hope it's in a good cause. She thinks so. <laughs> You're back early. Yes, yes, there was a bit of an upset at the town and county. Fred Brister had a seizure. Uh, that must have been a shock. Well, he is 92. <laughs> Still, shook me up a bit. Was it his round? <laughs> That's the trouble with drinking with pensioners. You never know if they're going to last the night. <laughs> What's your mother doing up there? <laughs> On the wall. Oh, thought I'd make a change. Take it down. Why? She's better looking than the bowls team. <laughs> One day you'll learn that looks aren't everything. As Granny Willow's always said, handsome is as handsome does. You notice anything about that smile? No. It's only round the mouth. <laughs> The eyes aren't smiling. There's a coldness in those eyes. The cruel, predatory streak. Yes, they say the eyes are the mirror to the soul. In which case, that soul's pretty murky. <laughs> it's you. Who do you expect? Gregory Peck? <laughs> of it's me. I happen to live here. I thought you'd gone away. I'll make a nice cup of tea. My word. Why did you say that? What? My word. Well, things are certainly getting crowded around here first. It's Matthew and now you. My word. <laughs> Whatever next. I'm not staying. Oh, no, of course not. Well, I won't say I told you so. Told me what? That it wouldn't last. Nothing ever does that's based on treachery and deceit. <laughs> did you walk out? No. Oh, you mean you just left? Well, I'm not surprised. I knew you'd be back one day with your tail between your legs, begging forgiveness. I'm not begging forgiveness, and I haven't come to stay. Then why the bag? Uh, uh, well, in case of a breakdown. I mean, it's a long way. Yes, yes, I'm surprised you bothered. Why did you bother? I came to see Matthew. Oh, yes. Nothing to do with the fact that tonight's our anniversary, and you thought I might be weakened with sentiment. Our anniversary, is it? I didn't know. Didn't know? Of course you did. It's the 26th, isn't it? Yes. I always thought it was the 25th. You're thinking of Christmas. <laughs> but you remembered it. Yes, I always celebrate our anniversary. How? I run through the fields naked, shouting with joy. <laughs> That. But you kept my picture. You're yeah, lucky I didn't draw a moustache on it. Oh, I'm sorry, Henry. I'm 
I'm sorry for everything. Are you? I think I better go. No, don't. Don't. Matthew's making a cup of tea and they're playing our song. Oh, no, it's late and I hate driving at night. Oh, it's not late, um. <laughs> it's um. Where's the clock? Clock? And who found it by the dustbin and had it repaired? I did. And what's this? The shepherdess. I bought that. With my money, you weren't working at the time. And what's this? Pickwick Papers. That's mine too. Pickwick Papers, early edition. Illustrated by Fizz. You've never had a book in your life. What are we going to do? Look at the pictures. I'm only taking what's mine. Well, well, why stop there? Perhaps you'd like me to help you peel the wallpaper off. I never realised they meant so much to you. Oh, what else have you got? It's my letters. They're my letters, actually. Written to me, which makes them ipso facto my property. Why do you want to keep them? What? Why do you want to keep them? Evidence. <laughs> One day, when the kids are old enough, I'm going to let them read these letters to find out all about this inhuman monster you were married to. <laughs> I quote, I long to be with you tonight. Feel your strong arms around me, your body close to mine. See your warm, tender smile. Taste your kisses on my... Oh, shut up. <laughs> that was a long time ago. I've changed. You certainly have. Not content with taking my happiness, my kids, my reputation. Now you've come back for the bits and pieces. You really believe that, don't you? You really believe that you paid for all these things? The great provider. Well, you didn't. You were too mean. I stood in cold, drafty sales rooms to get these, and I spent what little money I had doing it. Everything in this room is either damaged or second-hand. Well, I'm surprised you left. You must have felt very much at home. <laughs> I suppose it's just like old times. <laughs> Bloody clever, don't you? Flitting around this house like some moth eating Cupid. <laughs> Won't work. She only came back for her possessions. Because they had sentimental value. The reminder of happier times. Tread very softly, Matthew. I haven't forgotten who let her in. <laughs> that makes you an accessory before, during, and after the act. This is what is commonly known as an inside job. The car won't start. My word. <laughs> I wish you'd stop saying that. Except it's a good thing, Mum. You can't drive with tears in your eyes. Yes, yeah, you want to watch that. You could lose all your body salt. <laughs> could get cramp. I must be going. It's late. Oh, yes, of course. You must do this again sometime. Perhaps in another seven years. After all, there'll be weddings, christenings, funerals. <laughs> you don't mind if I uh, don't come out and wave you off? I think it's a bit nippy. And besides, your driving always did make me feel a bit nervous. What about the car? I'll look at it. Do you think you'll be able to start it? I shouldn't think so. We can't even drive. Oh, dear. What am I going to do? I can't stay here. You certainly can't. There's nothing personal, Sue, but uh, I lead a very full social life nowadays. People coming and going all the time, day and night. You'd only be in the way, and we don't need embarrassment. Mm. I see. Well, I suppose I could stay with Maisie Coupland. Maisie Coupland? I shouldn't think you'd be very welcome there. She was disgusted by the shabby way you treated me. Maisie? Why do you think that? She told me. She was very understanding. The hypocrite. She's my oldest friend. <laughs> Not anymore. But she's been writing to me all these years. What? Telling me all the news, what you've been doing. A devious old bat. <laughs> you won't start. Oh, well, what am I going to do? I can't go to Maisie's, not after what you've said. Well, you can't stay here. It won't start. <laughs> How would you know? You can't even start the day. You'd probably flooded. <laughs> no, 
this is terrible. What am I going to do? I've got to get home. Do you think he'll be able to fix it? He might. He's very good with cars. Oh, dear. start then? No. You didn't really want it to, did you, Dad? Of course I did. You can't stay here. Where's she going to sleep? Oh, I'll arrange that. She's in your room. <laughs> My room? Well, what about me? You'll have to make your own arrangements. <laughs> well, I have no intention of making my own arrangements. Henry, does this mean I can stay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I suppose so. Ah, well, I'd better ring Clifford. Oh, I've done that, Mum. What did you say? I said the car had broken down. Um, uh, did you mention your father? Yeah. I told him Dad was here, so you're perfectly safe. What did he say? Nothing. He made a sort of choking noise and ran off. What? <laughs> Lord, I'd better ring him. You better have a drink first. Yes, I think I better. Matthew! If you're going to stay, I think I'll change the towels. <laughs> uh. Why are you smiling? Just remembered. You rang me once and said the car had broken down. What did you do? Made a sort of choking noise and rang off. <laughs> well, if you'd been different... Well, life's full of ifs and buts. Are you here now? Where are you going to sleep? Oh, no. Why not? We're still married in the eyes of God. Yeah, but not in the eyes of Leeds Registry Office. He has precedence. Not in Leeds. We're not in Leeds. <laughs> Married to you, Henry. I oh, know. Exciting, isn't it? No, I'm not going to be unfaithful. Why not? Never worried you before. I'm not making a habit of it. I've forgotten how good you smell. How soft your hair is. No, look, Henry, don't try and get round me. Seven years. You haven't changed at all. <laughs> Put on a few pounds. Where? Oh, get off. It's <laughs> not fair. I always thought you didn't give a toss. I thought you were the same, and here we are. Holding hands. Listening to our song. Do you really read my letters? Don't have to. I remember them. Especially the last one, the night before we got married. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm going to wake up in your arms. Feel your bare skin against mine. <sighs> Woken by your kisses. Feel your body. No, oh my God, I'm going red again. <laughs> Confusion always suits me. I just. Yes. I'm afraid you have the advantage of me. Oh, I'm Sue. Oh. You're not quite what I expected. Ditto. <laughs> I, th I thought you'd be more... More what? Well, they described you as... Yes? Taller. <laughs> <clears throat> Are those Mr. Willow's pyjamas? Oh, yes. I stayed the night. I see. I don't think you do. My car broke down. What a pity you weren't in the AA. I understand they have a get-you-home service. <laughs> yes. Are these your letters? Ah, um, I think I'd better explain. Don't bother. There's no need for explanations. We all do things we regret. 
I should go now, my dear, before he sees you in the cold light of day and realises what a ghastly mistake it's been. What? The briefest glance at your letters reveal you as a deeply passionate woman, if a little out of control. You're obviously a slave to your emotions, and clearly they've been your undoing. <laughs> you don't understand. I wrote those letters years ago. I was Mrs. Willows. What? <laughs> Me from the picture. What's that doing there? That should be the bowls team. <laughs> well, surely he's mentioned me. Not by name, only as that woman. That woman? So he doesn't sit there looking at my picture? No. I've never seen it before. I should think that'd be Matthew. He's always going through the cupboards. I knew he was up to something when he asked to borrow my great themes from the movies, but I didn't expect this. <laughs> Just look at the state of this room. This calls for the pledge. Good morning, Enid. <laughs> my word. <laughs> the reviews are limited vocabulary. Why are you smirking? I'm not smirking. You were getting your own back, weren't you? What do you mean? On Clifford? No. Yes, you were. No. Well, I must admit the idea does have its attractions. If he'd suffered half as much as me... I thought so. Revenge! That smirk gave you away. You didn't put my picture up or leave that, Rose. It was Matthew. He even provided the music. Did he? I thought that was you. Oh, don't flatter yourself. I don't need reminding of you. No, all, all right. But I did mean what I said. No, you didn't. You were just taking advantage of the situation. Oh, stop straightening that damn picture. Fix the car. Right, good. Because we're leaving. What? Get your things. I'm not staying here. We're leaving the smirker to his picture straightening. Oh, and by the way, that wasn't our song last night. Clifford and I play it on our anniversary. <laughs> Thought you'd gone. No. She had that wait until I get you home look. <laughs> Seen that before when I was little. Matthew, dear, time to come in. The door closes, then wham! Look, Matthew, I think I should explain something to you. I like a quiet life. I like order. I like routine. I don't like dramas. I don't like crisis. I like everything in its place and a place for everything. Yeah? And there's no place for you. <laughs> Look, you need me. I don't need you. You need someone to talk to when things go wrong. Well, nothing's gone wrong. Yes, it has. No, it hasn't. Your mother came and went. Nothing's changed. Everything is exactly the same. Not quite, Dad. She came back for the clock. <laughs>